In simple terms, what is the difference between quantum computers and conventional computers and what makes quantum computers so effective for solving very complex problems? Well, the main difference is that uh, in a classical computer, uh, you are breaking down all you know problems, data, everything in binary numbers. So you represent anything in a sequence of zeros and ones. In a quantum computer, you can do that, but you can do much more because the quantum bits or qubits, they can take not only the value of zero and one, but also all possible values in between in the sense of a superposition like 50%, you know, 0, 50%, 1, 30%, 0, 70%, 1. I mean, any balance. And at the same time, this allows you to represent in a quantum computer, you know, all possible data. Um, but and then in some very specific cases, you can use this to really enhance the performance in solving problems. I say very specific cases because we should be very careful from the beginning that it does not mean that we can use a quantum computer for solving in parallel any possible problem. But, uh, you know, the quantum computer in this case would know the solution to every possible input. But uh, when we read it out, when we want to get the solution, so it's getting the output, then quantum mechanics also has the property that we would only see one of the many possibilities if we just look into a larger superposition. Instead, for some specific problems, we know algorithms which use during the computation this parallel exploration of all possibilities, but then at the end, they converge onto something that we can read out, getting a, a solution with certainty or with high probability. This is the difference, well, again, another difference uh, between quantum computers and classical computers that for some problems, we know how to exploit this parallelism to solve things much quicker. And, uh, you know, this is just, uh, uh, for the moment, a little number of problems. And for very many problems, we are still investigating whether this is possible. Could you give a few examples of problems that can be solved much faster on a quantum computer than a conventional computer? Yes. One uh, paramount example is, uh, and this was one of the first algorithms, factoring namely finding uh, whether a certain large number um, is a prime number or it can be factored in. So like if there exist two smaller numbers which multiplied together, they give as a result that large number. So this is something which is very relevant for cryptography, in particular for you know breaking existing codes. By the way, not with quantum computers, but with quantum communication, we can still have cryptographic codes which cannot be broken by a quantum computer, fortunately, okay, so this is not a kind of the end of the world, but this is one example where a quantum computer can do things much, much faster than a classical one. Another big class of examples is stimulating, reproducing, calculating the properties of complex materials and or of uh, complex chemicals. Um, because in this case, we can structure, we can put together, we can combine the qubits in a way that mimics, that reproduces how, you know, the elements in a material or the atoms in a molecule are combined and in this way uh, predict, reproduce what is the behavior of these materials or chemicals, which instead with a classical computer is extremely difficult to reproduce. Those are two problems in which we know that there is a very strong speed up. There are other problems in which speed up is known, for instance, the search in a large database, but this is a speed up which is not such a large so-called exponential speed up, which is, which is provided by a quantum computer, but it is more a quadratic speed up in the sense that the acceleration is as, the fun as a function of the number of elements of the size of the, of the problem is not so dramatic as in the other cases. However, such problems of search and related problems, for instance, opt optimization, finding the minimum of a function, are also very relevant for some tasks, for instance, in machine learning and in artificial intelligence in perspective. Uh, so in the very far future, it could be that we could use uh, mach quantum machines to, to go in that direction. However, at the moment, the requirements for the memory that is necessary for such quantum computers are so enormous that we cannot speak at the moment for uh, of kind of practical applicability in this sense. 
And what are some of the biggest challenges we face in quantum computing today and what can be done to make the technology more accessible? So one big challenge is the one that we already addressed that we know only a few problems. So there to address this, that can be solved with the quantum computer, to address this, we really need strong uh, um, engagement from the side of computer scientists, algorithm experts, software developers, to really, uh, you know, enhance, expand the range of problems for which we can use a quantum computer to uh, achieve that efficiency. This is on the software side. On the hardware side, actually, we have to uh, scale up to make bigger and bigger numbers of qubits available with increasing fidelity, meaning with lower and lower errors, because this is necessary to uh, create the so-called error correction, which enables to use imperfect qubits for doing uh, bigger and bigger calculations, uh, even though we do not have perfect qubits, but we kind of mimic them by correcting errors. For this, we need a very large number of qubits and you know, keeping the necessary quality of the coupling between the qubits while we are enhancing the number of qubits is a very big engineering challenge. And by engineering challenge, I do not mean something which, oh, we know how to do it. It's just a matter of giving it to some 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 big uh, you know production facility and it will be solved. No, it's uh, you know a very large technology and also development challenge, in the sense that uh, you know the, the 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 knowledge about, for instance, materials or the ability to you know create uh, control systems which are bigger and bigger is really non-trivial, and this is what uh, ultimately will make or break the whole system in the sense that uh, you know we will see whether we will be able to uh, mm, realize really useful quantum machines depending on whether we will be able to achieve such large numbers of qubits with the appropriate errors in order to 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 attack some useful problems how could quantum computing technology affect cybersecurity and encryption so it would affect, in the case they manage to get this scalable quantum computer with very, very many qubits, it would affect the security of existing uh, cryptographic schemes, which are based, uh, largely speaking, broadly speaking, um, on the difficulty of factoring numbers. So if we now can factor numbers very quickly, then current cryptographic schemes would be in danger. However, as I already mentioned, uh, using quantum communication, so the communication of single photons to establish cryptographic keys, we can overcome that problem because this is something which cannot be broken by a quantum computer. Not only that, but in synergy with that, there are also classical approaches which can be use, used for this. And th those are so-called post-quantum cryptography approaches. And those are classical computers which are using different algorithms, not based on factoring and has not... Uh, uh, um, you know, suitable for attack by a quantum computer to encode information. So this is something which is quite advanced. Uh, recently, you know, NIST, uh, uh, the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the US has launched a competition, a call for proposals for such algorithms. Uh, five have been selected initially. Three of them have been proven not to be secure. Two remain. And we expect that probably, you know, at least one standard will emerge now, the realization, the implementation of this, like changing the cryptographic uh, systems in all our computers, mobile phones, servers, communication channels, is something which will take years, but uh, in any case, less years than what is necessary to make a quantum computer. And so we are still on time. We don't have to be afraid for that. The synergy between post-quantum cryptography and quantum cryptography and quantum key distribution will enable our communications to stay secure even if and when quantum computers will be available, which would break the current crypto schemes. And how do you envision the future of quantum computing and what industries do you think will benefit the most from quantum computers? So as far as we can tell at the moment, the biggest benefit will be for uh, chemical industry and uh, uh, materials industry in the sense of developing new materials and chemicals with the aid of quantum computer supported, more specifically quantum simulation design. 
So uh, there we know that this quantum advantage is feasible. Of course, it will also require large numbers of qubits, but it is something where we know algorithms which will enable this to happen. And in fact, a lot of the chemistry industry, for instance, here in, in our region, in Yulik, where I am, we have Northern Westphalia, which is the core of the chemical industry in, uh, in Germany. And uh, a lot of the chemical uh, and pharma companies, m m very famous ones as well, which are located here, um, uh, they are already engaging in, in this direction to be ready when such quantum computers will be available. So this is the first impact that we can expect. Um, it will impact, uh, uh, you know, citizens like uh, normal people indirectly in the sense that uh, it's not like every one of us will use a quantum computer in our home or in our pocket, but it will be more like uh, it. Uh, we will use the products which are developed with that. Now, the other, uh, the next application, which is very much investigated, uh, but requires it's uh, even longer term because it requires, you know, big memories and, uh, and very large numbers of, of, of qubits to achieve the, the relevant advantage is the one in quantum machine learning. But there, as I mentioned before, the speed up is only quadratic, meaning that the acceleration is not so dramatic as for, you know, materials research or chemical research or factoring for that matter. Um, and so it means that um, in order to get a significant advantage, you need really to have very big uh, quantum machines, which are, you know, still very far in the future, if we will ever, ever manage to, to make them, okay? So when we speak about quantum machine learning and quantum artificial intelligence, we have to be particularly careful about hype and not uh, having overinflated expectations that this will come anytime soon. How could quantum computers influence the development of artificial intelligence and what advantages could this bring? Yeah, so this is what, what I, uh, we addressed before in the sense that, uh, you know, artificial intelligence is uh, based on, at the moment, essentially on minimizing very complex functions. So neural networks, which are the basis of different schemes for artificial intelligence, essentially are um, architectures, um, computer programs, which find the minimum of a certain function. Um, like when you give a neural network a picture taken from the internet and they say, oh, it's a cat, okay? It's because there is some sort of, broadly speaking, you know, definition of a, a, some distance, how different, like a di how distance, how different is this picture from the picture of a cat, okay? And if, you know, this distance is small enough, then the machine will say, oh, yes, it's a cat. So it's about, you know, formulating. And of course, as you can imagine, it's very complex. It's not something like a function which I define like saying, you know, uh, three plus one equals four. You know, it's a much, much more complicated function, which tells me with a number in the end, if you wish, is it a cat? Is it not a cat? Is it far or, 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 or close? And this is a very complicated function which gets minimized. And for this minimization, this is a problem which which can be cast in the forms of in the form of a search, uh, search for a minimum, in, in fact, and this is where such quantum search algorithms or other algorithms which have been developed uh, about you know adiabatic search and variational procedures and so on, uh, which anyway are kind of related with this kind of quadratic speed up that I mentioned before, could be in principle useful. Yeah. However, the resources which are needed for that are humongous and this is why even though as i said you know this is a possible path for quantum computers if and when they will become available at a very large scale to be used for artificial intelligence at the moment this is just a theoretical pursuit and we have yet to to see evidence of this of this um, uh, advantage in a in a real physical implementation and what impact might quantum computing have on the future of computer science education and education in general? Well, um, certainly in terms of education in general, this is a, a, a wonderful training ground for, uh, you know, um, new workforce, you could say, or new competence or new scientists, new engineers, uh, new mathematicians and so on because uh, you know it is a field which is very interdisciplinary you need all of these fields and more and also chemistry and uh, and and others in order to make a quantum computer 
So it means that um, the people who, in terms of education, are trained to develop and use quantum computers, they develop skills which can be used also in many other branches of, of, uh, of knowledge in many, in many other industries. In terms of computer education, I would say that um, this is somehow a little bit uh, longer term because before this can be used for really you know, training computer scientists, we need a working quantum computer which can solve big problems, as we said before. Okay, um, And so at the moment, the impact on uh, computer science research is more in the sense of looking for you know uh, new algorithms as we said before so it it, it would, i would say in the sense of computer education this is still uh, a niche and we have to see whether it will develop to, to become really this big thing that we hope very much but we cannot yet say for sure that it might become